so we have a new product this is a decida and we have my buddy over here helping us out so this is going to be for his e is it e46 e46 what year is that uh, this is 2000 okay cool so we already kind of unboxed that a little bit so we have um when we unboxed it earlier, we we're making sure it's the right product. But for y'all, this is the CAN bus. So there's information that goes through the BMW system on the radio. So it's nice to have um, steering wheel controls, you know, CAN bus to show you like what doors are open and stuff. We also have this thank you card from Decida. Ooh. Always rate your experience, even if it's po if it's positive or negative. Definitely give it a good rating. So I always like the Decida box. It's nice and firm, and they have some really good padding. Again, we have the harnesses. These were in the zip, uh, little like little baggies, but we took them out. So it comes with two harnesses. So if you guys have, uh, this is gonna be for the E46, it looks like. It's labeled E46. And then we have, what's this one here? E39. So depending on what make and model, their heads are slightly different. You can check that out right there. And then we have the, a bunch of extra harnesses. So this is for, not the harnesses, but the accessories like GPS, USB, we have RCA, yeah, antenna, Wi-Fi, all of that. And this is, we have the, the, the good. Look at that. So it's packaged in this nice pla uh, plastic thing. Let's take that out. That's such a big difference. So we'll, we'll do a quick comparison between this and the other one. It does have like a little screen protector, so that's great. I mean, we're gonna take that out, obviously. It's a massive screen. You have micro SD in the front, microphone, um, or comes with a 16 gigs, and the unit itself is a Max 6, so I think it has a 64 gig ROM inside, so built-in 64 gig ROM. You got micro XP to expand it, um, followed by the, you know, the brackets that are made for the car. We still have the HDMI, which is awesome, GPS, antenna, and then we have the accessories, that baggie we had there earlier, and then the main power ISO harness right there. Yeah. Is there anything else we need to see? No. Oof. We have the standard DIN, and you can kind of see the comparison. Look at that screen. What's coming in, and what's going to replace. Notice how the trim is going to kind of fit they had this little bezel to make it nice and smooth around this transition right here and also because it's sticking out a little bit it'll be easier to touch the screen and the angle will be a lot better because it's not going to be angled like this it's going to be angled a little bit more this way so you're not going to get all those reflections so uh yeah let's pop this bad boy out you might want to use the bigger end you want me to try so we'll do that Pretty tough. I don't want to snap anything. Is it? It's already been cracked right here. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really okay. Cracks all the time. The cold. Oh, there you go. It's coming out. So we're just working around this trim. Uh, we're going slow using a plastic tool. There's like four, four, five uh, clips all the time. So yeah, we, you can always use a, a prying tool. Plastic tool is always really nice because it's the safest. And these are how the tabs look like. Wow, these are like they're different. Usually, uh, I usually work on like Toyotas and like Japanese cars. Their clip design is a lot different than that. Nice. Oh, we didn't break any of these. That's good. Great. And it already kind of got 99. this. Eighty nine ninety nine. Eighty nine ninety nine. What's up with the prices? This is, this whole dash is only twelve ninety nine. It's pretty cheap. Same clip design. It's fr it's freaking long. Just make your do it slowly. Can you just pull it straight out? Oh yeah, you should have. Yeah, I would probably on that end. And we'll see. The screen is pretty massive. Uh, I don't think it's gonna block the vents, but we'll uh, give that a go too. So while we're working on the. Um, the trim removal you know we're going slow but that's fine this is an older car so you don't want plastics to just snap and because you know they get brittle over time so this guy has tools in the little roadside assistant wow look at that so bmw provides you all the tools that you need bmw what the heck even comes with a 12 13 10 and 8 8 10 12 13 
Wow, is that Allen key right there? That's sick. Is these your uh, wheel locks? But people know where your wheel locks are right now. We're removing this deck, and a something that we were talking about earlier is we have a HVAC controls right here. We can always relocate this down here, but we're gonna see if um, hopefully this unit right here can even just power the whole thing. That would save us a lot of time. And uh, yeah, so we'll give that a go. So is this the only head unit for this model or the BMW? For, uh, was there like, an upgraded model or anything or is this uh, one the upgraded one? So this is the one with the cassette player. Mm -hmm. In later years, uh, they have ones with the CD players. Okay, yeah. But I think certain years they were manufactured by different manufacturers. Mm -hmm. I think the late years have Alpine. Okay. Uh, I don't remember what the early years have. The two screws out and it just pulls right out. So the unit is separate from this and this exposes all those wiring. Looks like we have a radio antenna. Um, is that radio? Uh, this one should be radio antenna. Yeah. yeah. There's those big clips right there. We got the two, so those are pretty straightforward, but for this spot right here, it's a little bit trickier. And we're gonna have to pry this part up first. You use the flathead side of the screwdriver. Pry, pry this up. Look at that. And wow, I need some technique. If you pry it enough, it just slides Well, wow, the whole thing just comes out, huh? I wonder what that bottom cable is for right here. This one? Yeah. This is probably for the CD changer. Okay. Um, so this was a Alpine unit uh, with the cassette player. And the newer years have the Alpine unit with the CD player. That's sweet. And I think they have two spots here. Uh, one of those you can buy a cable and use as the auxiliary connection this one doesn't have all right so we have two harnesses right here we have the e46 and then we have the e39 I think for this model right here I mean you guys can see the harnesses and the back of this unit it has more of that um that more circular feel so we're gonna plug in the circular one and then we're gonna just plug it straight to the back also we also have to get that uh, the can bus in there so can bus it says e39 e46 and we're just gonna plug it in. There you have it. And we still have to remove this HVAC. Um, let's see, and then this thing will just be able to slide right in. Kinda. All right, so we plugged in this bad boy right here, and we just have, to, I don't know what this goes into. Nothing that really seems to actually make sense. So I'm gonna ignore that one for now, and then we're just gonna plug straight into the harness. We're gonna plug in the harness. I know this one says E39, but um, for the early E46s, it's the same plug. And then we're gonna push it in somehow. So we did get, we couldn't really squeeze the pins in all the way. Couldn't get it to lock, but we did get the, oh, can you turn the head unit back on? We did get it, uh, you can kind of see it. We do have it on and it's, it's on but the pins just aren't, it just doesn't lock all the way. They don't sit all the way, but I think they're tight enough to. So there's that. We'll just proceed with the install. The AC just comes right out. Um, yeah. We're gonna probably have to relocate it. Pop the uh, AC out, the HVAC controls. Yeah, you reach behind it and you just push. Yeah, we just forward. push. Pretty straightforward. There's these clips right here. Nothing screwed on, just these clips. All right. And then there are four harnesses going back. You need to undo them and reroute them behind where this uh, holder is. Yes. In order to undo these, you push this tiny tab and you slide the plate part back. Yeah, it looks like we definitely are gonna have to relocate this. Uh, at first, I was hoping that the AC controls can be all mapped into there, but um, it's not looking like it, so. The difference is that uh, these corners are round to better fit to oh, yeah. these ones. Uh, I think 
they are around 150 to 100 bucks. That's a lot for just from round corner. Yeah, but these still do fit here. The only downside is you have the corners. Uh, you have this tiny spaces in the corners. Mm -hmm. All right, so notice the little kind of fish the wires down here, and then we're just gonna relocate it. Plugging every single plug. It's four plugs, right? Four. Yeah. Yeah. So pretty simple. As far as and this, we try you to. Cannot, you cannot really mix those with each other, so they are all unique. Yeah. We're gonna do a test fitment next. Make sure the head unit down here kind of fits right there, no problem. And then we can try all the accessories like um, Wi-Fi, extra USBs. So um, if uh, Sir John over here wants to map, like put the USBs down here and have it in his glove box so he can charge his phone, or it has like two USBs or two or three, so three USBs. Another popular thing is you can run a dash cam from here and have it powered through USB, so you can have a dash cam powered by USB, two phones can be charged and stuff like that, so just other options, or you can just have a flash drive if you wanna watch movies, but you do have that micro SD card. What's up? Uh, when you're installing this cable, make sure that this tab is in the open position. Okay. Because this will also hold it and uh, help you to slide the socket in. Otherwise, it's not going to sit. Wow, look at that. Look at BMW with the over-engineering stuff right there. Mm -hmm. Little locking mechanism. AC kind of pushed in like there. You can tell that the fitment is not 100%, but you can also tell that the fitment is not bad. It's like, you know, you can spend the extra 200 if you want to move the AC unit. And so we're also going to try to remove this plastic little bracket keeping us more clear. So these screws are different than the ones holding the stereo in. Notice the... are bigger. Mm -hmm. Four screws. Just removing the top two and there's four each corner. So you notice how we removed all the screws and then this uh, this vent is actually holding the bracket together. So we just have to take this vent out. It should be held by clips and then we just pull the whole thing out. All right, so we removed this. This one was already like, uh, this clip right here was already like broken. So just pull this trim piece out. And uh, yeah, that's, this is how it looks. So we're just gonna take it out, put in the new unit. Cool. We are trying to get it fit. It's actually not the easiest fitment. It looks like the dash is a little bit thick. So we, had, we ran into some fitment issues right here. We're gonna have to like, basically use, use a Dremel to cut this little piece right here so then it can go flush back because right now it's, uh, it's bumping. But um, the steering wheel controls work if you wanna show the steering wheel controls work. Are you okay with the music? No, 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 just, just okay, that's good. You can put it down again. So the steering wheel controls work and everything. Just had to do the fitment. We're probably gonna do that another day. So stay tuned at that. Um, and the sound sounded much better than the stock radio. Really? There's a lot more power. We're gonna mess, probably mess with that later, but uh, let's try Bluetooth and stuff. And then, other than that, it's probably gonna wrap it up today. Everything, all the fitment stuff is gonna be another day. The install was very easy. It was plug and play. It came with two harnesses. If you guys were looking to buy this unit, links down below in the description on on where you can get this unit right here. It's It's been really good. Um, the sound quality is just, uh, just so much more like power going to the speakers now, besides that, instead of that stock unit, so. Yeah, I mean, we're happy when you when we booted it up. It said BMW 2, which is always a nice, classy touch. And um, yeah, here we go. Up through Bluetooth. Let's change it to the. With the we got the Bluetooth fan, and it showed the the metadata too. So yeah, see you guys later. Peace.